we are ready to start talk number two from uh, Regis Hauvorburg from Grenoble. Uh, and he told me a little bit earlier, he fell into uh, open source about 15 years ago when the need presented itself. So uh, he will talk a little bit about how big corporations are responding to embracing open source software. Regis. Yes, thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, yes, as you told, uh, the previous presentation is totally in line with this talk. I'm very happy the, of this schedule. Uh, yes, big corporation. It's one part of the discourse. Uh, do we do too much uh, when we contribute? That's uh, a question we often have. You told it, be brave, launch user groups, and uh, delegate. There is one interesting point here. I explain why. Uh, and I take the QGIS project, in which I'm involved since 2008, Funding first, then uh, contributing uh, at many levels, but not code. And just to generalize the discourse for every open source project, I think. Uh, so <laughs> I'm slowly becoming a nerd. I was before a guy uh, working in the agronomy field, and I needed GIS to work, and I fell into GIS. Uh, at that time, it, it became suddenly a patient. And then I became a GIS administrator for 10 years for handling water, um, river courses, and, and then SQL served my life. That's really important. And then open source saved my life, literally, because I, I had the opportunity to totally change my previous life by jumping into professional open source uh, work at uh, Oslandia, where I work now, and changed my location. I moved into the mountains where I wanted to go. I work remotely, and I have bees, and uh, yeah, <laughs> cool. Uh, and I was designated uh, OSGO, French local chapter president, uh, some year, months ago, and uh, I understand the braveness you have to have to push it forward. Uh, so Osland, yeah, fast. Uh, we are a lot of doing open source uh, pro providing services. We're doing only this uh, GIS 3D data intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence. We have 15 guys all working remotely, uh, open source, and slowly becoming a sort of a holocratic uh, company, so horizontal and transparent. and. Uh, all building it together, it's a really interesting journey to have to, with those great guys. And we have QGIS and PostGIS committers. Yeah. Uh, those are the communities we work in. Uh, it does no Java. Yeah, that's my main thing. So QGIS, tell me who you are. This project is uh, really something I'm learning a lot about. You all know it's become a reference project main GIS in the world, though we have no clue how many users are using it. And then, <laughs> hey, <laughs> is it sustainable? Every trainee we have, they ask for free? How, can it, how does it do? Is there a big corporation underneath? How does it work? So we have to explain a lot how it works. And to scratch a bit that uh, wonderful model, model to find the thing we have to improve. Of course, it is already sustainable. I struggled for half an hour to build this uh, change log, uh, and I would like to have the the users num numbers to make a logarithmic uh, legend to scale it. It's uh, it's crazy how fast it goes, and uh, the three ten is coming today. So, already said in many conferences, we are building it. It's not a big corporation. Uh, you are using it. You are spreading the word. You are a contributor. You are no more a user disconnected from the community. And of course, internet and for 4 gs allows this. But now that I'm a former user, a former GIS administrator, and I'm living in the wonderful world of nerds. <laughs> I discovered that uh, coding in C++. There are 
just uh, saying a graphical user interface is evil. I want to do algorithm. I don't like the UE file in QGIS. I'm just covering this well. I'm kind of a bridge. I hope I can learn things from this uh, being between those guys I learned to live with and to talk with and uh, the, other, the rest of the world, maybe. So what is a happy contributor? Of course, he has basic needs. Eat, have a social life. No, it's not always this one. It can be optional, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> pay the rent, of course. Uh, raise kids. And there's sort of an inverse uh, scale between going down and uh, the amount of time available you have to contribute. And it's really important for the rest of the, the discourse I have. And uh, to have more, more time, of course, I have that kind of big machine to compile QGIS faster is really important. Uh, yes, one hour and a half. Uh, get stickers, yeah, you all have some. I think you're happy now. And then, do not burn out. Sorry, it's the dark part. Uh, I experienced it myself because we often want to over-engage ourselves. This is our main risk. We have to face it in the eyes. I think many of us encounter this. Uh, and what you said about building a local user groups, be, um, building a support group for the, the organizers or for forges, um, it makes a lot of sense to me. We have to find guys to help us. And being alone leads to this. Trying to do it by yourself leads to burnout. And informatics, I discovered it, uh, tends to give the impression that we are uh, super power guys because we can code things and automate everything. And there is a danger between informatics and being able to do really wonderful things and trusting you can do it to them alone. It's not true, you can't. Let's go back to QGIS. When, uh, how does it work exactly? Uh, funded in two <laughs> No, <laughs> it's in the future. Uh, Gary, Sh <laughs> Gary Sherman released it uh, in, 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 Canada, in Alaska, sorry, in a really remote place in Chugiak, I think. And I thought that start it was only benevolent. And I, taught, uh, I learned discussing in this conference that very, very early, in the early stage, there were paid services already to improve this as a post-GIS post viewer. It changed me a lot of, on my uh, thinking about QGIS. Of course, between the uh, 1.6 2010 and uh, the 2.0, most uh, of the benevolent contributors became uh, professional. And I did too. Uh, and I was sucked out of the user world. I was a funder, and when I left, there was no more funding. When learning, you have to teach to new guys, do your, your job. Uh, there's currently a whole commercial ecosystem in almost every country. You see the numbers? 151,000 euros for QGIS.org budget. It's uh, ridiculous mainly coming from sponsorship and donations. So, the value, when you try to estimate only the source code with the open up project, uh, it's estimated to $26 million. It can be totally false, five or 10 million, I really don't know. But you see the gap between the, 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 the QGIS.org budget and uh, evaluated. So you can, if you do basic estimations, you can think that maybe five or ten billion do dollars have been spent in contracts, in paid contracts, really, when only 151,000 uh, euros were spent to support QGIS. Thanks to the current sponsors and all this, it, it, it really helped in a lot of things. This small budget that's changed, maybe it's a year different, um, is spent mostly on bug fixing. Ten, thanks. Mostly on bug fixing. And however, we still have very much blockers and users unhappy at each new release. 
We have the grant program, everybody knows the grant program. Who doesn't know? Raise your hand. Yeah. We ask every year, uh, we have 20,000 euros to spend to things you propose. It was features at start. Now we are trying to do some more boring stuff, funding documentation, infrastructures, uh, code review. And the community votes on it and spend uh, a part of the budget of the associations. It's really important if you do the same thing on local chapter. It's, it's uh, emulation on how to fund. It's, it teaches how to fund. And there are boring tasks like documentation. We have uh, money we don't spend. We don't find guys to write documentation. That's really an issue. Well, IT expenses, developer meetings, it's almost all beer there and uh, packaging. So, we have some issues. It's growing so fast, we have some issues. We have to face them. Infrastructure. Um, when 3.0 went out, there was 70 terabytes downloaded in one day. So the provider collapsed and said, hey, you have to pay now. Uh, we negotiated, we didn't pay. Packaging. Uh, did you hear about the macOS uh, war packaging in the last month? MacOS users are probably not uh, accustomed to uh, free and open source working, and they were really shouting on Twitter that it was uh, yeah, old words about the, the macOS packaging. And we funded this. Still, they are not happy. Um, documentation, I said it before. Marketing, we maintain blog sometimes. Uh, Anita Grazer has been doing a great job, but we need more people doing this. We now have a great welcome page feed in the 310 coming today. We'll be able to touch the user, passing messages directly to them, not through the GIS administrator of the, of the IT guys. So we have to think about what we will say to them. We have issues explaining how it works. Most users are, are, are just taking QGIS and deploying it to a thousand users in a university, not dealing with profile maintenance, patching every month the, the releases. We fix bugs every month, but they don't deploy it. They keep the bugs in. So they don't understand that it's a dynamic, it's something that flows. You, know, don't, you, you don't want to be static with a the, the version you use. If you want to be security, you take the LTR, long thing re releases. They don't understand this, very few. Bug tree age, we have more than 30,000 issues on the GitHub. And there is one guy volunteering. I try to help him and it's not a fun work. So if you raise the issue and uh, we ask you for feedback, please answer, uh, yeah. And if you want to <laughs> do bug triage uh, and slap yourself with us, come, we need you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's. Yeah, yeah, we are the bumper between the, the unhappy guys and the. Yeah. Uh, we have quality assessment. We do a lot of uh, testing in the code, but not integrative testing of the whole interface and uh, playing each time all the tutorials and the training manual, and that should be done. And I think paid, because nobody will volunteer to do that. And code review, Matthias Kuhn, Niall Dawson, and some others are doing a huge amount of work to review all the pull requests coming. And uh, they don't pay, they are not paid really much for this. It's the economics of their own uh, corporation that, that allows that. But uh, in the end, 2% is the best factor. Oh, now, what about France? It's self bashing. This is the, the incomes uh, for only QGIS.org. I, I really know, have no statistics about the real fundings of uh, features or bug fixes. Uh, I think we have many more users than in many countries. We have massive deployment everywhere and still all, very few sponsorship and donations. There are several reasons to it, but I think the main one, the main one is cultural. 
But to be optimistic, uh, what is raising today is new trends, at least in France. Very big corporations uh, like uh, internet provider, optic fiber guys are switching totally into QGIS because they were fed up about the S3 maintenance and no support. In fact, they were paying a lot and they had no support when having issues in big environments. So they, they, they went away. Uh, the whole corporation is pushing uh, open source top bottom. That's really new. They are seeking the services that are not using open source and they are converting them in a very not only for geomatics. There are part of uh, big clusters uh, like LW2. And they took the way of having support contracts with uh, Auslandia. And they used us to explain the others how to interact with the community. Just making a pull request to fix a bug in a project is not enough. You have to involve yourself in the project and the community and uh, make it live on the long term. That's why they liked us. It allowed lots of things and really easily, only with dealing with hours, not big contracts. QG server refactoring, QG server OGC certification, we are now uh, reference implementation, uh, performance improvements, security audit, audit and earning. Now it's bulletproof for uh, big corporations. Uh, we have now big cities jumping in in the same uh, logic, and we are pushing support contracts because it seems to be the, the best way to deal with uh, commercial uh, services. And also water companies, big water companies, they're just uh, smashing S3 because the negotiation don't end. It's too expensive and they, they don't manage to go there. So they are currently prototyping everyone alone in its uh, own situation, uh, QG's desktop prototypes and a web server. Public research, they've already been there, but now I feel that the new generation is coming and pushing big projects like uh, Geopoppy, if you know that, Lease map and uh, on the field and saving things in, the, in Africa with this with almost no cost. So let's take some minutes to talk about you, uh, how to behave, what did you learn, what can we learn? So everybody use Kutris, I suppose. Yeah, okay. Uh, how many knew that roadmap? We have a fixed schedule, four months, and one year long-term release with patches for bug fix. Ah, not so much, so we are not good at advertising. Um, how many of you have enough time to test QGIS in the right timing when it's freezing period? Starting tomorrow for 3.10, it's the right moment to really test it so when the QGIS, the three tens is released in one month, it works in your use case. Or at least you can hire someone to fix the bugs. Raise hands. No one, I think. Yeah, Andreas, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, this is a, a massive uh, problem for us. People, people are too late between the, with our schedule, in fact. Uh, how many of you have been blocked by uh, a bug and really annoyed? Yeah. And how many of you uh, have support contracts to deal with it and not stay blocked? <laughs> Andreas, <laughs> yes, again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do you all subscribe or participate to a user group? Yeah, no, no, it's not so bad. Uh, sponsoring, how oh, many of you managed to do that? I never, di I never did myself before. Yeah. Um, well, some of you teach, I suppose. Do you start just not with a project lead, but also by explaining how does it work? Yes, people are really interested in it. Play it again. There are, once I was, I had to, to shut that discussion two hours later because it was killing my, my, my course. And this is maybe the most important thing. You have dropped map info, map info contract, support contract. Did you kept 10, 20 percent of it to convert it to contributing back? Did someone do that? 
Yes, that's the way, I think. Uh, I think I covered almost everything because we are finished now. Yeah. And uh, it's all been done, said here, but this one I especially want to say because when I quit my job, I didn't raise a baby contributor. I raised a lot of users, a lot of uh, C++ developers and Python developers, but no one dared to go out and come here in Force4G and explain and take the money and continue to contribute. I think this is what I learned. Thank you. So we have four minutes. So this may be kind of a delicate question because I see you have a lot of money for bug fixing. How do you use that money? How do you decide who is going to get the money to fix things? Is it companies from the, I don't know, a tender? Yeah. <laughs> It's actually not so easy to uh, to do it in a, in the right way, but uh, we try to uh, use the most efficient ones. So actually, those who are heavily involved with the project uh, by contributing, like uh, also features, they know the code the best, and it uh, and they also get <laughs> uh, most of the funds. But they they also kind of have to step up and say we have time to invest into bug fixing because what way what what QGIS is paying them is the a lower rate they would usually get from customers and and uh, we all pay uh, like uh, uh, regardless where they live they will pay the same rate like in Switzerland it might be a low rate but in in other countries it might be quite a high rate yeah very interesting talk, thank you. I was wondering, you put up the budget of, of let's say, QGIS org, but is there any estimation of how much money or how much budget there actually is with all the companies developing stuff paid by contracts from, from outside? So, I mean, I think I would think that most development is not paid by this, is paid by, by contracts and... That's for sure, yeah. <laughs> That's what I tried to, to show with the Open Hub uh, $26 million estimation that's only on code. You're not tra uh, estimating anything about trainings, uh, which I think is huge in the world. And um, we don't know, really. Uh, we tried to catch a very small fraction of it. Uh, we are trying to at least for the certification, there is a new certification program so that every, every trainee certificated will get a little bit of money into QG's uh, budget. That's trial. So just from the from the kind of the results you've you've presented, it, it seems that QGIS is well, and from my experience, QGIS is quite European centric. What, I mean, how can we get people from the developing world to contribute to use the software more and contribute? I don't know if you have any ideas around that. So, so I've done some work in in Pakistan, where well, those sort of countries where you would expect that it would be in their interest to use the software, but you know, it's, it's relatively unknown in those sort of places. So I come from an uh, underdeveloped country, and we are really pushing QGIS, especially in government. There's been a couple of years where ArcGIS was still bought at large scale because many organizations say, well, we don't have support, and we need an enterprise support. The word enterprise is always a key. So we really struggle with that, but uh, the community is getting stronger and stronger, so we are able to give support even though there are no uh, private uh, companies that give it in Argentina. There, there's been last couple of years some initiatives. They are still growing, so there are private QGIS courses and uh, consultants like me who give... <laughs> QGIS support, but we are not there yet to contribute code. 
we just started planning uh, little cold sprints for this year and next year to see how we can contribute, especially with documentation because it's what we use to give the courses. So we are thinking we're going to go that route, but we need all the help we can get to be able to contribute from Argentina because we don't have any budget. There's no money at all. We always put money from our pockets to do the meetings and get a free space to gather and everybody bring, brings their computer and we pay for a mobile phone to get the internet. But we are trying to see how we can contribute. There, there's movement, there is, and in Brazil also. I'm going to have to close because we need a five-minute changeover. So I'm sorry, Regis, but uh, generate a lot of interest. Thank you very much.